the digital transformation of India's healthcare industry has the potential to accelerate from $2.7 billion in 2022 to approximately $37 billion by 2030, says a report by BCG and B Cap. What do we think is going to be the role of MSMEs in this ecosystem where innovation is thriving and companies are partnering and extending influence by horizontally and vertically extending and achieving scale and improved efficiency? To answer the question of the role of MSMEs in the healthcare industry, my guest on the Do Big podcast today is Sudeep De. Sudeep De is the president IT at Healthcare Global Enterprises Limited. Sudeep has a strong understanding of three critical ingredients, strategy and its integration with IT, latest technologies, and strong project management skills to be a contributing member of the executive management team. His current engagement involves bringing in enterprise transformation and big data initiatives in public health. Welcome, Sudeep, and thank you for joining us on the Do Big podcast today. Thank you. Thank you, Sheetal, for this opportunity. And uh, I am happy as well to share my views. Okay, fantastic. So should we jump in with the first question? What do you think is the role that MSMEs can play in the development of the healthcare sector in India? You know, healthcare has had so many issues, right? We always talk about the lack of doctors, um, for the population that we have, we talk about the lack of facilities. Where do you see the whole role of digitization and the role of MSMEs in this space? If you were to ask me, just taking a couple of steps, actually two steps behind, I'll tell that, you know, the mm. corporate healthcare players like ours, uh, who are a chain, who are a network of hospitals and have tried to corporatize their administration, they woke up to digital transformation and they started their journey immediately when COVID struck and they realized that uh, there is a need for doing so. And in your introduction, while we were speaking, uh, you said that there is a potential uh, upscale on the business side, which can be realized with the help of digital transformation. And you have rightly said so, because we all realized that with our brick and mortar uh, infrastructure, we can reach out to as many. Outreach increases with the help of digital. And in several ways, uh, from wellness to actually tertiary care, everything is enabled. In our case, especially the tertiary care is enabled with the help of a lot of connectivity, which is provided by the Tatas for us. These were the two steps behind. Now talking about how does an MSME help uh, and how does MSMEs bring about a change? Much of our healthcare is very unorganized and everybody is willing to be a part of this journey for overall good of the society, for overall good of the business as well. So under such circumstances, MSME can bring in a lot of frugal and at the same time adaptive technologies in the market, which can be taken up by small time uh, healthcare providers who are not a chain, who are not a corporate hospital or a corporate uh, chain of clinics. For them, it becomes easier because MSME understands what works, especially for the Indian market. And if you understand, India's premier, uh, you know, uh, business is driven by the MSME segment. They are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. In fact, I would not like to name, but um, when we had just concluded in our enterprise also a technology implementation, we realized there is a frugal technology available. Just because we had to go through the cycle of, you know, realizing full potential benefits, we were not able to switch over. So hence, I believe strongly believe that MSME has a uh, potential to bring about this transformation faster and in a frugal manner. So, you know, Sunil, that's really interesting. And two questions which really come up uh, for me with the conversation that we're having. So there are many aspects of healthcare, right? They are like you spoke, there is inpatient, there is outpatient, there is, um, you know, now people are even wanting healthcare at home, things mm. like that. Which aspects and where do you think MSMEs will play a much larger role and why? Good question. And um, uh, seldom I come across such specific use cases of uh, MSMEs playing role. Uh, I think MSMEs can play a great, great role as far as uh, wellness is considered. And I think MSMEs can play a major, major role in primary and secondary care as well as diagnostics. 
and uh, we have sporadic innovations here and there when i say we i am not talking about my organization we are a tertiary care uh, provider however i see a lot of enterprises who are like enabling remote icu intensive care who are enabling remote diagnostics and all this is possible because msmes have taken that leap they had that appetite and frugality in their approach to do this so to these two areas are the primary use cases i feel and not only it is a business opportunity they will go a long way in bringing down the overall health expenditure of the country so if we are focusing on primary care and secondary care and we are focusing before that on wellness then these two put together can reduce the you know load on tertiary head when you talk about well wellness is really large right yes are there parts that you think they would do very good with when you speak about well wellness not just for people who are already uh, good that is very well done by these fitness apps and all this wellness for people who had an ailment who are uh, my my specific area was in those terms actually since we are coming from a tertiary care and we are propagating wellness and we come from a tertiary care which is also a chronic disease kind of for example ours is onco speciality many at times patients who have won over this dreaded disease they are at times at risk not only them their family members are at risk not because it is contagious at all but because it is about genes so under such circumstances some measures which we also propagate for example preventive diagnostics you will be surprised that uh, our data and the industry data says that almost 80% of our cases in oncology are stage 3 and stage 4 detections whereas it is reverse in the developed nations so that is where i was saying from a wellness being in patients same goes for by, by the way for diabetes uh, and i know a lot of work which is happening in both in the ncr region as well as in bangalore it is as chronic a disease let me tell you it, it affects we all know multiple organs it has potential to be a silent killer uh, and so for, on that front for people who are having some chronic disease same goes for uh, nephro uh, people who are at the risk of uh you know having some chronic disease or on, on the verge of getting it they can be several ways benefited uh with the help of wellness programs and these programs are to be curated in a manner that they need not visit any tertiary care and we also uh, are partnering with i can't name and tell much about the project wherein in a very specific way we are working uh, for a region to specifically find out how can we prevent buccal mucosa cancer so that is my definition of wellness our definition was of wellness was not related to for example you and me who are already fine which is also a space but not the subject which i was wanting to speak about okay and you know um when whenever we talk about the wellness in uh, the healthcare industry we are always talking about better outcomes and Uh, whether it's corporates or it is msmes or um, you know it's smaller companies we've realized that outcomes is what we all measure right what is the role that technology will play when it comes to delivering better outcomes because my assumption and correct me if i'm wrong is that the msmes will be working with large organizations such as yours your expectations will be based on kpis etc so where does the role of technology come in it is technology has a major role and it has the potential to do it but as far as direct outcomes and there are again sporadic instances where people have not just uh, measured outcomes they have also gone ahead and published them and uh, on their websites however to have a full proof thing or even have a full proof one use case done we will need a lot of commitments and uh, from people who are all involved in fact in our organization also we tried at least three or four times um, the outcomes measurement was a one off case but it couldn't be sustained as a on a regular basis so hence we went on it's not that we have left the baton there we have gone ahead and, and we are experimenting so that one of the aspects we are very particular about is post surgery recoveries which we want to this has to be seen in a holistic manner similarly we are also talking about our chemotherapies which are 
which is reincarnating itself in a in the way of uh, something called immunotherapy uh, so immunotherapy and uh, surgical uh, treatments we are trying to find out those kpis and how they can be system driven rather than manually calculative because anything manual is not sustainable so uh, there are projects on but we are we are still not reached there to be honest there there is a long way to go about you know i think we as a country woke up to digital transformation using tech etc like you said with covid and therefore it's not really old right it's young everybody is still kind of figuring out what can i do with it uh, where can i bring the change etc so when you think about this digital transformation how do you think it's going to change for msmes what is going to happen there i understand large organizations are investing a lot of money and doing things but where is it going to change for msmes that is how market is changing that is how ms it is changing for msme because everything is available like you know a very homologous example will be for telepresence several years ago what is the kind of i don't want to name the company here i am sure they are also working on making your their solutions affordable and reliable what is the kind of investment which was required for a proper telepresence conference room what is the kind of inclination organizations had now let me tell you with and not just in my organization i know of organizations which are much smaller and areas like ongol and kanpur and uh, lucknow where they are investing in teleconference uh, you know solutions and which are at a fraction of cost all these things matter they are wanting in fact one of my friends who is the uh, head of the function uh, in one of the hospitals they had themselves ordered for five teleconference rooms so uh, why is this possible not just because it is needed but they are also becoming very affordable talking about tata tele they have so many frugal uh, video conferencing solutions which are many to many in nature which can enable collaboration and this is just one example and the world is right you know um, they have almost uh, a reason that there is a requirement for doing things look at oracles and microsofts of the world they have their special segments which are focused on msmes because they want they know and they recognize that there is a drive in that segment it is not educating the customer then converting them they know the drive is from them right the same goes for hyperscalers they have different kind of models they have different kind of hosting solution for msmes so it is not just that how can they do it it is just that we are the world at large is uh, you know growing up to like they had grown up to the matter that you know developed nations are the market similarly all companies are realizing msme is the market so and it's as much as in in, in healthcare yeah so i at least know of three four such people who are not uh, head of it for a group of hospitals or a 1000 crore company they are like 400 500 200 100 crore companies which are investing heavily they want apps they want apps hosted thankfully till now i have not heard that they wanted some ai project also but digitalization and digital transformation everybody 9 10 months last 9 10 months have been like everybody speaking about it another interesting thing shivel which is happening is all these people are also getting aware about information security and that is also made available because companies like tata tele are a very structured organization they are not those fly by night operators very focused on a particular segment of uh, you know industry this entire amalgamation this entire ecosystem is you know arising and it is going to take it up with the big wigs and hence the big wigs are i think uh, forced to be more nimble you know you really uh, you hit the nail we're at the beginning where you said that we did we chose to work with a large company versus a smaller company initially right when we were talking and i just want to understand that if a small company needs to co- convince a large organization to work with them what are the things that they should put in place what are the things that they should be able to come and say that will convince large organizations such as yours uh, to say okay let's work with them let's give them an opportunity a uh, very good question pertinent one shipil there has to be some level of openness 
amongst us. That is one, of course. Shouldn't say that everybody is open to it. And sometimes it is also because there is a uh, pressure uh, to have labels working for you. And uh, I would not go beyond. Uh, however, I think on the MSME front, they should be speaking about their solutions and abilities a little more. Also, their case studies, which are successful, should come out in the market really well in a proper manner. People should speak about them. They themselves should speak about it. And that is something which is again doable even for these MSMEs, these solution providers, because today it is a very level playing field. On a similar example, if you technically ask me, somebody wanting to do an AI project around seven years, five years ago, it wouldn't have been possible because nobody would have been able to afford the hardware. But now it's commoditized. I think mom and pop shops can talk about that. I want to do something in the AI. I have some amount of data collected and that can be used in a hyperscaler where the compute can be made available and can, I can try it. And then if it works, it's fine. So such kind of abilities are there. But I think the word has to be spread a lot more. But then probably people will have their mindset change. Okay. So uh, typically, I, I guess the ch- challenge is that when you think about B2B companies, marketing that B2B companies do is very different from marketing that B2C companies tend to do. And they need to therefore change the lens with which they market themselves. They need to be out there much more. And do you think they can leverage technology to do that? (laughs) Of course, of course, you know, I, again, without taking names, uh, A company was saying B company and its patients are more secure because uh, we are working together to safeguard. So, and, and it is floating all around and people who are interested, you, you know how digital uh, works these days. So it is very specific. In fact, I know of companies who have just gone all digital. That is how it should be. That is how the end. Uh, more important is elevator pitch is very important. People have to be very precise with communication and in less time. That is happening all over, trust me. The attention spans are, spans are very small. We should be able to have communication design which is striking the chord immediately and shoot, gone. And similarly, uh, you will know it more than me, Sheetal. I shouldn't be speaking much about it. Positioning of this is equally important. Where are you putting it up? How are you uh, defining the algorithm or logic to put it up? Whom are you wanting to listen? These things are very important. Okay. So they really need to get into the details of marketing, which is defining the audience segment, defining where the audience is there, what is driving the audience, what problem of the audience they are solving. These are things that you think they must first put into their plans before they go out there and put themselves on digital and market. That's right. Which aspects of the business do you think that, you know, they will be able to leverage for not short-term impact, but really sustainable long-term impact because healthcare is not about the short-term. It's really about having long-term impact. So where do you think um, organizations will be and businesses should be able to leverage tech for sustainable impact? It can be answered in a way saying that, you know, healthcare also needs to be seen in a different manner, you know, with a different lens because uh, there is a business tech to it because uh, it is operated as a business. So we have, we procure goods, uh, we pro- give them as services, we pay out salaries. So it is like a normal enterprise. And at the same time, it has got clinical technology, which is very, very different. But all the OEMs in clinical technologies are very aware about what can data do. There has to be a two-pronged strategy for leveraging clinical IT uh, and clinical tech and uh, we, we have the same in our organization. And similarly, there has to be a similar, I should say, optimum way of looking at how business tech is to be used. So both the things are very important. Focusing on one, we will be, you know, uh, we will have to uh, short circuit the other one. So they, they, both of them have to be balanced out. There are certain underlying things which are like infrastructure, which are like, which are bottom line of everything, the bedrock of everything in services. But apart from it, on the forefront is are the these two strategies which are to be focused on in healthcare. And you know, you earlier also mentioned about data, and when we talk about clinical tech, especially, uh, data becomes very, very important. 
especially in the healthcare industry, you know, with the world going the way it is, with GDPR norms happening, etc. What do you see challenges and the opportunities for MSMEs when it comes to managing data? MSME, it's not just me. I think the world feels like that. Much of it is, for me, it is also acquired knowledge. Nobody is born with such things. They have to be very, very aware of that they are uh, working with certified partners, especially with healthcare data. Uh, there is a data, digital data privacy law, which has been passed by Indian government, and it is to be enacted very soon. All the, both the houses and president has already approved the law. They should know where they are putting their data, who has access to it, what use is it is being put to. Have they notified the individual who is actually na- labeled as a data principal here? And who are their data processors? It is a 90-page document. They should understand it fully. The language is very, very simple and they can take help from people like you. And uh, they should be very well aware of what and how, and uh, especially the digital data, how it is being kept. Because um, it is it is more stringent than, and it has got more teeth and power than even GDPR. The DPDP Act of India is very simple and yet more powerful. So this is something they should think about. Okay. And uh, this act is available easily for them yes. to access it, read it, and yes, 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 yes. yes. It also have guidelines in terms of implementation. What needs to be done? Yes, that quite a bit, be. quite a bit. Sheetal, it simply says that you have to consent before you do anything with the data. You have to mention what are you wanting to do, and you should be in complete control of the data of the data principle. A person sharing data with me is data principle. If I am collecting data, I am a data fiduciary. And if I am giving it over to somebody, let us say it is in my systems and my systems are maintained by Tata's. So Tata's become my data processor. So it has rules and guidelines for everybody. Oh, wow. That's quite detailed and interesting because data today is becoming one of the, you know, everybody keeps talking about data as the new oil. and But when it comes to healthcare data, I think people become very sensitive about it. So... That's Thank you for that advice. I think it's going to be very important for MSMEs. My last question for you is that if you had to advise MSMEs on their digital transformation journey, what would you recommend? And it'd be great if you can say, you know, here are five points or whatever, which we can kind of put out for them. Important thing, but I have not uh, categorized. One is they should think what they want to do and create a team within. And this is not in that chronology. They should look up for partners who are invested, uh, not just invested monetarily, invested in the story of transformation. It is irrespective of it is a large organization or an MSME. And then they should look for an advisor or a group of people who can draft a strategy and work it out. See, the basic ground rules remain the same, uh, but the mindset they, they probably have to have a mini mission statement, uh, which they will have to create and live up to. And then uh, it is, it, by and large, you know, Sheetal, after this is my 25th year in working, I have realized that project management and enterprise initiative management or anything you say revolves around the same common principles. You set out with an objective and keep a plan ready, plan which is inclusive of all stakeholders. Uh, that means stakeholder management is taken into account. Who will action what? Who is responsible? Who is to be consulted? Who is to be informed? And uh, those kind of things. And a review process. Very critical. Uh, reason is many at times, one cannot be just very, for the lack of a better word, a very stubborn kind of mission statement that this is the only way to reach there. We should be able to improvise, but keeping in mind that we are not changing it 180 degrees. So these are things which one should keep in mind. Have a mission, have people who can, uh, you know, people are very, very important. If you have the digital mission, then only you can make it realize. Have advisors who are trusted advisors, who are not fly-by-night operators, and uh, see that they have skin in the game. They are invested in the story which is getting created. Every success is actually a story. Every successful project, I'm sure, Sheetal, you would be able to narrate to somebody as... Uh, you know, in this company or in this environment, we did something like this and this created in something like that. So that story, 
the partner should be invested and interested in. So these are things which I would say by and large. And of course, you should be knowing the law of the land. This I had to say, things like DPDP and other stuff. Ah, uh, Yeah, especially with the healthcare practices, yeah. isn't it? That's fantastic. Actually, when you were speaking about, uh, you know, the things that they must have, I was thinking of Simon, Simon Sinek's model, which says start with the why, which says define what your objectives are, but it's a mission which is larger than. So tell people why you exist. Correct. Uh, so I, that was very interesting. That's what you said, that you must have a mission and must be clearly defined. And then he talks about the what and the hows, right? So what are you going to do and how are you going to do it? And I thought that uh, when you were saying that, I thought that was an interesting model to apply to um, to what you were saying. And um, how also could cover the the review system, right? Which is what are we going to achieve and have we achieved it? Okay. Um, it's an interesting um, process to follow for MSME. So that that I think is really, really great. Sleep, so I had an absolutely wonderful time chatting with you and I hope that we will have more conversations with you in the future and I'm sure we will partner with you on other things. But thank you so much for being with us today on the Do Big Podcast and thank you for sharing your experiences and your knowledge for our MSME listeners and people in the healthcare system who may or may not belong to MSMEs. Um, so thank you so much for being here today. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for tuning in to the Do Big Podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to providing insights, strategies and success stories of smart digital solutions for SMEs. We believe that behind every successful business, there's a strong foundation of reliable and secure technology be it digital connectivity, cloud infra, cloud apps, collaboration tools, or cybersecurity solutions. In a rapidly evolving digital world where technology is key to progress, Tata Tele Business Services stands at the forefront of digital transformation of SMEs. Tata Tele Business Services, with their extensive experience and commitment to empowering businesses, understands the unique needs of SMEs. Tata Tele Business Services, with their extensive experience and commitment to empowering businesses, understands the unique needs of SMEs. Whether it's scalable connectivity, robust communication tools, or tailored ICT solutions, Tata Tele Business Services is here to propel your business forward. Tata Tele Business Services is synonymous with innovation, reliability, and transformative solutions. With a legacy spanning decades, Tata Tele Business Services has been empowering businesses and transforming lives across the nation. So, if you're ready to take your organization to new heights of success, we encourage you to explore the transformative possibilities that Tata Tele Business Services has to offer. Our contact details are in the description below. Remember, we're available on major podcast platforms. So, if you enjoyed today's conversation, Subscribe to our podcast for future episodes, which we promise will be packed with equally valuable insights on questions entrepreneurs face as they digitize and scale businesses with the help of technology. Don't forget to rate and review our podcast as well as share it with peers, colleagues and other entrepreneurs like yourself who will benefit from listening to it. Thank you for listening to us. And until the next time, keep embracing technology and may your business thrive in the digital era.